I'm Julie and in today's video we're taking a look at oxidative colour. You might have heard there is both alkaline colour and acidic colour. Today we will show you the differences and talk about when to use what. But first let's recap. Here comes a quick overview of the pH scale. pH is measured on a scale with numbers ranging from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral Anything below 7 is acidic and anything above 7 is alkaline. Most oxidative colours are alkaline. These are permanent colour and demi-permanent colour. When an alkaline colour is applied to the hair, the cuticles swell and open, allowing the colour actives and dyes to enter deep into the hair shaft. The oxidative chemical reaction is powerful and fast, allowing for bigger transformations such as lightening, coverage and colour intensity. Remember, an acidic pH will have the opposite effect and draw the cuticles together to create a smooth surface. In an acidic colour, the oxidative reaction is slowed down significantly, so it will not lighten the natural hair and therefore is a deposit-only colour. As you can imagine, both come with its own benefits. Generally, where we need bigger changes such as coverage, lightening and more intense results, we need a colour that works in an alkaline manner, such as a permanent colour. In this section, we will visually show you how the colour results are different between acidic and alkaline colours, so you know what to expect and when to use one over the other. Let's look at creating beautiful blondes for example. We mentioned that alkaline colours can lift the natural hair. When you tone blondes, for example, you'll get a soft lift and it helps to create a more balanced blonde. What do I mean by this? Take a look here at this example. If I use an alkaline toner, it will tone the highlights to reduce the brassiness. Additionally, it can slightly lighten the natural hair in between, which will give the appearance of a nice balanced blonde. An acidic colour, on the other hand, does not lighten the natural hair which is perfect if you would like to preserve the character of the hair and only tone the lightened areas. As the natural depth is not lightened, the fresh highlights, which are more porous, will show the strongest tonality. Depending on your desired colour results, both acidic and alkaline blonde surfaces are creative tools for your daily colour work. Our second example is the red tones. How is the colour affected here? This is an interesting one. Firstly, it's important to know that acidic colour does not mean just soft, natural looking colour results. You still get intensity. This is often seen in the red palette. Evidently, with an alkaline colour, you have the ability to lift. The colour will adapt itself to what you put it on to ensure you get the near to true swatch result. Now, what would you expect from an acidic colour? Well, let's start with the darker depths. Now thinking back to the no lift aspect on darker hair, due to this we can expect much more subdued results with a hint of red. But as the starting point gets lighter, you will see that the intensity increases considerably. So the key thing to remember with acidic colour is that your end result is heavily dependent on the starting point and the porosity of the hair. An alkaline colour will have the power to adjust the starting point in a different way. Okay, so we have covered blondes and reds. You might be asking, does it also play a role in brunette results? And yes, to a certain degree it does. Firstly, did you know that even when you colour hair darker, let's say with a permanent colour, it will also go in and affect the natural pigment in the hair first. This will allow the colour to become more balanced and even in the end result, but also stay on level. Of course, if you have heavy old colour on the ends, this will affect the process, but you get the idea. Now on acidic colour, as it is just deposit only, it will just add colour to what is already there. So remember, if your starting point has lots of variations, so will your end result. Here comes an extra tip. If you've used a colour remover, such as Colour Renew or Magic Off, 
and want to recolour their hair after, it's best to use a permanent alkaline colour, as the active ingredients and technologies of an acidic colour are not compatible it will interfere with the colouring process and the end result will be affected and you might have uneven results. You have two options. If you want to recolour using an alkaline colour, you can use a colour reducer, no problem. However, if your final formula is an acidic oxidative colour, it's recommended to use a mild lightener before to remove the unwanted colour. Mix in Blondor with 1.9% in a 1 to 4 mixing ratio. Okay, so to summarise, acidic and alkaline colours both have their special powers and are amazing tools for you to have when you want to create beautiful looks for your clients. Acidic for zero lift and zero damage and to preserve the natural characteristics and highs and lows of the hair. Alkaline colours such as Colliston Perfect and Colour Touch for more powerful changes such as lightening, covering and creating more balanced end results. Stay tuned for more inspiration and education topics. Keep an eye out on the Weller Professionals Instagram page or visit Weller Education. Thanks for watching.